what is going on guys name is here bringing you guys a brand new video and i want to say thank you guys for showing the new series some more love we got a couple more episodes on the way but if you've been missing out on some nameless content just know that i have been live every single day you can come tune in to me playing some more zone every single day around 9 or 10 a.m eastern check me out on twitter at twitter.com slash nameless where i will be updating you guys every single time that i'm going live but typically you can catch me any weekday around those times in the morning but all right, guys, I wanted to make a video today uh, talking a little bit about the Paris Legion. You know, a lot of people have no idea what they're going to do. We've seen some pros tweeting out that they signed contracts and things like that. So everything in this video is obviously rumors and hypotheticals. Nothing here is going to be a fact because we don't know anything for sure yet. But I wanted to sort of look at the list of players that was available and see if I could build a solid roster. So I want to go and look at the different possibilities that Paris could go with and see which one i think would fit best and be the best move for paris in the future all right guys so yesterday uh throughout the day we had got our x mox pander and kismet all tweet that they signed a contract now where did they sign a contract at what team have they joined is the question because you look at the team and you're like okay kismet you know if there's one player that i would absolutely want to retain from that paris team if i was paris it would probably be kismet and who would he want to team with this could possibly be a team i could see like an ar issue uh being the thing on this roster uh it being a little bit too slow uh but this could be the squad i mean they were teaming during the black ops for throwback the phase tournament so there is a little bit of like insight there but we don't really know too much because they haven't said too much on social media so i'm just gonna assume that these guys are just trolling the timeline and that this isn't the actual team because i don't think paris would make a team that is that ar heavy at least i would hope not given the players that are available in the player pool right now so let's take a look at that player pool actually and try to come up with some rosters and see which ones would be the best fit for Paris going forward. All right, guys, so here's a list of uh, players. I believe there are some other pro players that are available, but right now, um, this is the list that uh, I came up with. Uh, but let's check it out. So you got in ARs, you got Aqua, General, Goderex, Mad Cat, Mox, Pander, Whalers, Wuskin, and Flex. You have Aches, Blast, Draza, Fellow, Frosty, Gunjar, Hollow, Luca, Pred, Sib, Scraps, Temp, Exotic, SMG, Classic, Fire 40, Jambola, Kismet, Royalty, Saints, and Slacked. Now, if I were building a team, there are a few different routes that you can go here, right? Like if you're rebuilding and you're trying to build a new team where you're not going to be spending a ton of money because obviously a lot of the superstar players, they're off the table. They're on teams. They're signed to these other teams. You're not going to be able to grab them because you acted way too late. So if the superstar players are off the table and you don't want to spend a ton of money, you want to get players that are going to be excited to be here, excited to be on your team, excited to play under the Paris brand and that have a lot of potential. So for me, if I was a GM, I would go the potential route, the upside route, not players where we know uh, where their level is at, where, you know, their talent sort of caps out at. I think I would base my team around Hollow and Draza. I thought that they showed a lot of... Um, a lot of strength towards the end of last season i thought they had a lot of upside and potential um they were one round away from moving on and beating the huntsman like i think that those guys have so much potential going forward and it would be a shame for them to not get a chance so i think I, after them being on that team and proving themselves i would even you know put them on the roster and build around them so i think i start with those two and then i look at what i need so hollow is actually a flex player he's not a main ar but i think i would almost push him towards being a main ar because i think he has the talent to do it and if you don't put hollow as a main ar and you pick up a main ar you might run into that issue of like is hollow a good enough flex and will there be the role issue if the game is a little bit too slow so it's like i think i would want to put hollow as main ar and have draws as the main sub and then it's easy to just fill in the last two spots right because you look at the rest of this list and you know then it comes down to will scraps want to play with them and will they want to play with scraps because scraps would be a fantastic addition to this roster as well as temp and you know if you can't get some of these guys to play with each other like scraps and temp then i think you take one of them and then you look at some of these younger players like sib or or fire 40 or even bring in another player like slack who you know can help mold uh, hollow and draza and bring them to the next level and i know a lot of people will come down to me for saying bring in bring in slack but you know slack absolutely knows how to compete at a high level he's been doing it for a long time and the statistics don't back it but 
Slack is an asset to a team. There's a reason his teams always do pretty well. And, you know, he's sort of been with the same group of players. If you got him with some young guys, maybe it would bring the best out of him. But, you know, looking at this list, it's very tough to come up with another sort of team. So I think I go hollow, Dra hollow Draza. Uh, and then I would get temp and I believe temp and scraps probably wouldn't play with each other So then I'd probably do slacked as the last final player to round it out And then the other option is hollow draza scraps and then you look at you know, maybe picking up you know, either a frosty or a fellow. It's just very tough because you got to remember Scraps is used to teaming with very good players. And will he not want to team with his brother is the question. So if that is the question, then you have to do Scraps, Weskin, Hollow, and Draza. And then Hollow has to be the flex, which isn't ideal, but that is a solid roster as well. So I think those are the two rosters I would go with, uh, you know, the, the Scraps and Weskin, because I believe He'd probably want to play with his brother, and I don't think Temp and Scraps will play with each other and alongside Hall and Jaza. So in every iteration of any roster I make with this group of players, I'm going those two. Um, but there is another route you could really go if you wanted to get a little bit weird with it. Uh, so if you're trying to pay the absolute minimum to every single player on the team, uh, obviously you're not going to be able to get players like Scraps and Temp. Uh, at least I will... I would think that they wouldn't accept the minimum. Uh, and if you were gonna try to do that, you'd probably have to get players like Mox, um, who's a discipline AR, actually a fantastic addition if you're not gonna have to pay him a ton of money. Uh, and then you're gonna have to grab players like Fellow, who will join the team because he's been in the amateur uh, seen for so long and some of these young players like sib and uh you look at fire 40 i know he was playing with parasite last year and he had a great showing a lot of the amateur tournaments so he's a he's also another addition i just think potential matters more than than uh than history i guess uh you want to base your team around that potential so i think i would go with fire 40 uh hollow draza sib i think those are the guys I would base my team around not the entire team but if i'm going to make a roster two of the players will be players like that um just simply because it's a risk and you're likely going to have to rebuild the year after 2021 so i think you just take a shot in the dark here and try to build some players up you don't have to pay them a ton of money they could have a lot of upside and they could end up winning for you so those are the guys that i would go with um and that's just me you know and my mentality has changed over the years guys you know me i was always the old head guy saying that the veterans are most important you could maybe bring in one young player but now it's changed for me after seeing last year and the year prior to that these young guys have just been lighting it up man and the, and you have to pay attention to what these guys are doing and give them an opportunity when it's time if a guy is lighting up challengers it's time to bring him up and give him that chance especially if you're a team that's in a situation where you're late to the rebuild you don't have superstars on the table anyways and you're gonna have to probably rebuild once again in 2022 so i think it's their time to try it and you know I'm hoping that they do. So we'll see you guys. This is just my two cents. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a like and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.